Hello and welcome friend. In this tutorial we will try to look at how to navigate a folder or a structure using our own inbuilt binary similar to ls. So if you guys know that ls command will list out the output in that particular folder or path whatever you have given. So this ls command is actually written in C and if we want to do the same thing on our own as a practice of writing a system API or system call or a POSIX API calls, how do we do that? So for doing that, we will have to understand first couple of things and then we will go and see what exactly we need to do to achieve the same thing. So there are some data structures which we have to understand and also we have some calls, particularly the open DIR call and read DIR call. So there is this data type called DIR, which is an opaque data type and it represents a directory stream, a kind of handle, not exactly handle when we have the file handle, but not exactly the same. And what is this opaque data type and where it is defined? We will come in a moment. Then there is this structure called DIRENT and you also use this structure. So this structure will return the details of that particular file. So simple, but we'll look into this too shortly. Then in my program, what I do is I look for the argument that someone has to give an option which directory you want to list out for because by default, I can look for current directory, but I want a user to provide me an options where exactly I need to look for. So this is just a simple thing. Arcsy represents the total number of argument this particular binary needs to be received. So if there is no argument, then it will be just one argument, which is the name of the process itself. So I will just exit that. Okay, you're not providing any extra argument apart from the name of the process. So what we need is the name of the process, which is a dot out or any binary and the name of the directory from which you need to list out all the contents. Simple. So this is just an error handling. It's good to write error handling. Uh, but you can ignore this for now as if it doesn't exist. Okay, then the next thing is before we navigate the directory, what we have to do is we have to open that directory. And then there is this call, uh, call called OpenDIR and in which I will pass an argument. Whatever I pass from the command line, I will pass that argument and it will return me one represents directory stream. So for that particular directory, whatever I'm trying to open, and, and go inside that, it will return me one data type, which is a streaming of the data. If somehow it fails because of permissions or any error, I will print it out and I will print the error number. Now error number by default is integer type. What I want is, I wanted to print the corresponding string for that. And then there is this API called str error present in string functions, which converts the error no to the string value and it will tell you the nice little message like permissions denied rather than some minus uh, some one two three something like that not like that and then it will exit now if i am successful in opening this directory then then it will go here next and it will loop in that directory until and unless it's null so it will read the dir with respect to that streaming of the data and it will try to get the information. If the information fetched is coming into DIRP is not null, which means we are getting some information about that particular file. That means that file or directory exists and mind it in Linux and Unix, everything is a file and file and directory are same, except for a feature that a directory can contain more files and file cannot have any more further, further thing inside it except for the actual contents so in terms of logical structure directory and files are represented same in unix and linux so read dir will return the properties on that particular stream and as part of that property will print the name now let's quickly go through some of these structures data structures first and i have this helper functions where i have jotted down all the details so first thing is, let's go for this header file. stdio, no brainer, we use printf and all those kind of things we use for that. dirent, we need for these structures and this uh, opaque data type. 
string handling we need for str error error no because we are trying to print the error number if we don't print this probably we don't need this too and std leave is for exit and other kind of uh, functions okay now going to the dir ent let's try to see what is dir ent having inside so i'll open dir ent first and you you should be remembering that all the header files are part of user include folder and i'm using ubuntu 17.10 and let me see the dir ent.h in dir ent.s if you see here you will not find a direct definitions for dir which is a data stream however you will find struct dir ent so so we have seen that dir ent if you look at this dir ent you will see that it includes a file called bits dir ent dot h so let's go here dir ent dot h which is my include file from here dir ent dot h now this file in internally will include another file called as bits and types dot h not types dot h bits slash dir ent dot h so now if I look for bits ent dot h locations that would be located here in Ubuntu and this might change slightly in other distro so this is where it is located now if I look into this file I will have this structure dir ent structure which I am trying to gather here so struct dir ent star dir p is this now don't confuse about these two because it's the same so one is a inode and one is a offset so it's just a different representations of data for 32 bit and 64 bit so nowadays we are all using 64 bit so we don't care much about that so assume that this doesn't exist on this so this structure has a data type called as inode and offset and then it has a recycle length the type it's a directory or file or it's a link or whatever and the name and if you see here any file name cannot exceed a length of 256 characters is coming from here so this is 256 na the name of that particular directory now where is this dir dp defined if it is not here so dir dp is actually dir is a opaque data type and it is not defined here so it's part of gnu compiler and it's coming here it would look like this it would be present in G, uh, dir stream dot h which would be part of uh, glibc or libc library but somewhere i have seen that its definition would be like this and this is opaque data type so you can assume that this is what it is and in dir ent dot h this has been this entire thing this dir has been typed def to this and this is something similar like this okay now let's go to the program again and we have seen that the data structure is there so let me refresh you have two data types one is dir and one is struct dir ent you whenever you do this kind of calls you have to open the directory where you want to do your operations you want to list it out once you are able to successfully open that directory then you will read that directory and once you open the directory you will read so you if you assume file io same thing you do uh, for reading the contents of a file you open a file you get a handle back once you get a handle back then you do a read assume the same thing you open a dir you get dp which is kind of handle a stream of data but not exactly the same but assume for understanding purpose and then you do a read dir read dir will return you the data that means that file exists and for that file you print the property d underscore name uh, d underscore name is the property which we have seen here that this will tell you that dir ent struct dir ent has an element d underscore name now let's quickly run this pro program before any further delay before i run it i have this folder called temp and in this i have created some files and folders in subsequent manner so let me run this find command the generic find command in my system and will tell you this so this temp folder has some of the folders and files like this so it has some of the files like a b c d and then it has another directory called one and inside that one i have one two another file called one two and things like that so let's quickly go to temp and if you see here temp has these four 
folders uh, sorry four files and then four directories and all these directories are empty except for one and if I go to the directory one then I have some more files and then directories and something like this okay so if I say find dot slash temp I will get the content like this now if I use my program which is list dir I compile with GCC and then I run this program now let's suppose if I run my program without list without giving an, an arg any argument so it will it could have done by saying oh I should print the current directory with a dot but I'm not doing that I I'm forcing the users to provide me an argument now if I say the argument dot temp now you see the difference here my program has also outputted what the find command or ls command will do by default so if you say ls ls and my program will always do the same thing because ls is doing for the current directory if I say ls dot slash temp you see exact the same thing one two three four a b c d one two three four a b c d don't uh, think about the order order is something which we will look later on because that depends upon timestamp sorting and so many other factors which ls does that and I'm printing in new line so that's why it's saying vertically you could have presented uh, without new line as horizontally so my ls and uh, the, the, sorry the ls command and this a dot out output is same dot dot and dot dot is also there because if you say ls minus l there ls minus l a there is a dot and dot dot also so by default these are hidden by the ls so those directories also exist so this way you can write now the question arises okay you can do this what ls is doing but you are not listing it out recursively like if i say ls minus lrt L, you see ls will just list it out or if i say lrt it will re reverse and list it out but it is not listing out recursively by default ls is not re listing out recursively for me but find by default will list out recursively if you wish to you see it has listing it out so how do we recursively list out the directory so we will look in recursively listing out the directory in our next sessions in this sessions we just wanted to make it simple so that we have a familiarity that how to open a directory and how to read the content inside that and we will just present to the user so this is exactly same as ls command in the system so thank you all for watching this video and i hope to see you in my next video you have a nice time bye